All right, everybody, welcome. We're super excited to be here again on Tuesday night. This is our, um, oh, no, hold on a second. I'm just, just one second. I'm so sorry. That's my bulldog. And she was just, you know, she's protecting me. So, okay, let's try again. So this is our Building Beautiful Lives social that we have every Tuesday night. And we are really, really excited that you guys are here because we have a very special guest tonight. I'm so looking forward to hearing her story. And before I do that, uh, introduce her. Let me um, just say again, if you are a guest, if a market partner invited you to be here, if you could make sure that your first and last name goes in the chat along with the person who invited you. So just say, you know, I'm Patty Whiteye and I was invited by Dana, something like that, so that we know that would be awesome. We are going to be drawing for um, a box of energy um, drinks. And you guys, if you haven't tried them yet, you're gonna be blown away. They're so amazing. So at the end of this call, we will do that draw. And I'm going to introduce you to our special guest tonight, Jen Pavlik. I got a chance to talk with her today. And I was, you know, every time you guys, I fangirl because these incredible leaders that we have on these calls have impacted me in some way or another. So I have to tell you about Jen. When I first started in this business, it was 2018. At the very beginning, it was January, so I'm just four years in, and um, there was some negative stuff going around on the internet about the company, about the products, and I remember her doing a video. She was sitting in her car. She's a hairstylist. She's been a hairstylist for a long time, and she did a video in her car that explained why these are the best products and why you can be so confident and so sure that you're using what's best for you and for your family. And every time I had somebody who was not really sure because they had heard some negativity, I would send them her video. I just said, she didn't know that until today, but I would just send them her video because I didn't have the, um, the authority behind me. I didn't, I wasn't a hairstylist. I didn't know anything about hair when I started. So I just want to thank you for that, Jen. So Jen is a market mentor. She's uh, been in the business for seven years. She's earned trips. She's an emerging founder. She's a Cadillac driver, and she's done a ton of training. She's going to Miami on the leadership trip coming up, and I'm super excited to introduce her. So take it away, girl. I think she just froze. Are you there? I think you're frozen, Jen. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, no. She might have to go out and come back into the call. There she is. I can't hear you, you're muted. Uh, can you hear me now? This is, now you're muted. Okay, good, then this is what we're gonna do. All right, bear with me guys, I'm so sorry. This is what happens when you live in the country. Okay, you have to punt. So I apologize. Well, what an honor being here. I really appreciate it. When Aaron asked me, I was like, me? Why me? Um, because I have, you know, I have followed his journey um, and I've been in this for quite a while. So do you guys know, my name is Jen Pavlik. I'm from the Madison, Wisconsin area. Um, July this year will be my seven year mark in Mon 8. So I've been with, I've been with the company for a really, really long time and I love it. I, um, so when I started out, I am a network marketing failure because I quit all other network marketing companies that I've been in. I've been in network marketing since I've been 18. Um, and I'm, and, um, I've been a hairstylist for 28 years. So we'll just, you guys can figure out the math on my age on that. So I, um, I, I, I when I, heard about Monade. It actually was from somebody who is in another um, company with me. And, you know, he brought it to my attention and I said, nope, nope, nope. It's not a professional hairline. I'm not going to touch it, whatever, whatever. Well, lo and behold, I had, um, I'm a late in life mom and I had my hair salon in my house and we, we live a really, really clean lifestyle. We're kind of health and nutrition fanatics. We try to live a chemical free life. Right. And 
um, I, I, I started, I started actually, um, having postpartum hair loss now standing behind the chair as a hairstylist for so many years, I would see it. And I would see some of my clients, kids graduate from college and they still didn't grow in like their recession area. Their hair was really dramatically much more thin. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've always had pretty decent hair. Um, I better go check these products out. So I knew that they were a little bit more of a clean line. And you guys, back then we only had nine products. So there wasn't much to choose from, which in a way was good because you really found the right fit at that time a little bit more quickly. So I started to, you know, use the products and I said, all right, I'm not going to do the business, but I'll sign up as a market partner because I'll use them in the salon. I'll use them on myself. And, um, you know, I just, I, I knew I was still nursing. I didn't want all those chemicals in the house or on myself while I was still nursing. And, um, you know, there was a little bit of that adjustment phase for me, just only because I washed my hair like once a week. Right. Uh, but then I thought, you know what, I, I, I kind of think I like these. And I really liked what I was seeing in the salon with my, my clients. And then a few of my clients would order and I'm like, no, nope, I'm not doing the business. I'm not doing the business. And mind you, I had my salon in my house at the time. Um, I have a salon here now, but that's a different story. Um, but I had the salon in my house and um, my, I had a nanny and my baby was upstairs and I was still working from seven in the morning till nine or 10 at night. And even though my daughter was in the house with the nanny, I was not seeing my daughter. And I thought, I'm a later in life mom. This is not what I thought being a parent was going to be about. I want to be a mom, right? But I also, for more than half of my life, my salon has been my baby. So that's all I've known is hair. Plus, you know, I've, I've lived, my mom and I have a horse farm. So I travel daily to my family horse farm and work in the bitter cold. I was out there today. Um, and, you know, I, I'm a very, very busy person, but my salon was my baby. and. I thought, I, I, I don't think I, I, I like all of these hours I'm working behind the chair. And mind you, when you're a hairstylist and especially a, a single operator like I was, I used to have employees and then I had renters. Um, when your salon door is closed, you make no money. And when your chair is empty and people no show you, you make no money. So that was very stressful when people would forget, life would get busy. Well, that's great, but that's money out of my pocket. I can't fill those no-shows. I can't, couldn't take vacations with my husband, because, or I would, but it would be so stressful because I'm busting tail before, I'm busting tail back, you know, when we get back. And it really was not enjoyable for me. So I started to see all these people in the hair salon or in Monet making decent money, helping people like, all over the country because we were just in the U.S. at the time. And I'm like, they've never touched a head of hair a day in their life and they're making decent money. Like, what do these people know about hair? Well, if they can do it, I can do it. And I was like, no, not going to do this business. I'm not going to do this business. I have no time. I literally am the epitome of the person that has no time between all of the things that I have going on. And I thought, you know what? It might not be ideal, but I'm just going to put my head down. And even if it's 15 minutes here and there, I'm just going to work it. I'm going to work it in between clients. I'm going to work it whenever I can. And in that time, we ended up, mind you, I still go to the farm every day. I'm working in the salon. We sold our house that we had. I've got a newborn and three dogs. So we're showing the house. I'm cleaning the house and like mopping as the kid is in. Well, she's a little bit more than a newborn because she's in her little walker. So they're in the garage. The dogs and the baby are in the garage as I'm mopping, as I'm going out the door, right? And we're showing this house. We sell it. We move. We've got this big piece of property that requires a lot of work. And I'm like, you got to keep going with this business, Jen. You got to keep going. Put your head down. And I did. And I continuously do. And I haven't looked back. And I'll never forget one night I, I, I had a moment to rock my child to sleep, right? Like th that was awesome because I usually had the nanny or the sitter put her to sleep and I'm rocking her 
and like two and a half hours go by and I'm there rocking my baby and I am working on my phone. And my husband texts me, he said, did you fall asleep? And I said, no, I just signed up three new VIP customers. And I'm like, holy crap. I didn't realize how long the time was. So I put her down, I go upstairs and at this point, he's not 100% thrilled with me always being on my phone. And I remember we had to have a discussion one day. And in the meantime, I still was doing hair. I had to go back and rent a suite. And then I ended up renting an old historic home, but I'm still pouring money out renting, right? So with that being said, I, I'm making the, slowly making the changes with my business. I'm slowly starting to downsize, right? And I remember him having a talk with me one day and he was like, listen, you know, he works for UPS. He was gone all the time. I was gone working. And then when I was home, I was, I was on my phone a lot of my downtime. And he was a little strict and a little stern. And as he's talking to me, I'm on my phone, right? I mean, kind of a jerk move. And he's like, are you even listening to me? And I go, uh-huh. And I go like this and I show my phone and he says, what's that? And I go, that was last month's commission check. And he looked at me and he will tell the story. He was like, it was like somebody took your big biceps, Jen, and punched me square in the face. And he looked at me and he says, what do you need from me? He says, keep doing that. And I said, oh, I'm going to, like, I'm not listening to you, <laughs> right? And, and he's been super supportive and he's been on board ever since. Um, you know, so with all of that, yes, I, I earned my Cadillac. I'm on my second one. It's been a dream vehicle of mine. So that's awesome. I've been able to travel. Um, you know, I don't, I don't stress when I'm away from the salon. Um, I'm an emerging founder and holy cow, that was the wildest rush and run. Because when I started, I didn't really care about the founder's pool because I wasn't in it to do the business. I didn't see the big picture. I had been just a failure at everything else, every other network marketing company, but I didn't have the support. I didn't have the love for those products. And I just didn't have, I didn't know what I didn't know. So fast forward, I retired from doing hair full time a couple of years ago. Now I do hair because I want to, not because I have to. And I love it. I love doing hair, but I don't do it as often. And my body is that much happier. My daughter is that much happier. But I think you guys, the one really important thing that I do want to share with you, and I know I don't want to be over on time here. Um, I can be a little long-winded. This is the most important thing. You can always make more money, but you can never make more time. And I'm going to really try hard not to cry. I pumped myself up that I can do this. And if I get emotional, I'm sorry. So the, the year I retired, I was down at my best friend's house in South Carolina. Most of you know who she is. And I got a call. My grandma was sick. So when I got home, I went to the hospital. My mom couldn't go because she had a cold. So my aunt and I were up at the hospital. I didn't have to worry about canceling clients. I didn't have to worry about rescheduling people. And I got to hang out with her and she came out, you know, fine. She's sassy and, and whatever. And, but I got to be there for her. And then um, that's when you guys know Tony had her health issues and she came to Madison to visit me and she actually surprised me and she wasn't feeling well. And she ended up in the hospital here at the UW and her whole entire family, including the dog I housed, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't live in the house that I'm at now. And I, if I didn't have the time, right, I could pour into them and care for them the way they needed to while they were here for her. And then my mom got sick and was in the hospital and both of us run the farm. So I had to pick up my share on the farm and be there for her. And then COVID hit, you guys. And my husband and I still think to this day, and that's when I've had I, my business exploded. My personal business exploded during COVID. Everything shut down. Everybody's salons shut down. So I would have had to pay not only our mortgage and all of that if I was still working behind the chair, but my salon rent and all of my salon overhead and all of the insurances and all of the things that go with it, right? Well, then my daughter was out of school because school's closed. So I didn't have to worry about taking care of a salon and clients. I didn't have to worry about sending my daughter to daycare. 
but most daycares weren't open. I was able to be there with her. I didn't have to worry about any of that. And while some of my other salon friends were struggling, I was able to give back in a way I never could give back. Once in a while, I'd message them and say, hey, you might want to check your email and there would be a Whole Foods gift card there or you know, a local grocery store gift card would be sent in the mail. Um, I was able to help out and give back to them. And that was, that was, that could have been me, right? That could have been me. And now I'm able to homeschool and be there for my daughter when, you know, things were, you know, we, we still can maintain a consistent life, but then my grandmother got really sick again. And you guys, you're never gonna get time back. And if you're working your tail off 24 seven, and if an emergency happened and you're in the back of your mind worrying about your job, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying quit your job, but you gotta have a backup plan. You gotta have something to fall back on. And I'm not just talking about savings or just your investments, but you gotta have something working and making money for you while you're away from your job and while you're asleep. I was able to be at the farm every single solitary day when my grandmother started to decline. I was able to be there by her bed, hold her hand with my daughter. So my daughter has seen a lot in the last couple of years and she's gonna be seven. And I was able to be there, no worries. When she would sleep, I could go back to my business. I could go back to my job. Monate was still there. It was operating for me. And when she passed, I was able to fully pour myself into her celebration of life, right? I was able to take the bull by the horns and not worry. And you guys know we don't have to work this all day, every day. So I will tell you, time is something you will never get back. And it is the most valuable, valuable thing that you can try to create for yourself. And so like any business, any industry, you're always going to have your ups and downs, your relationships, right? Marriages, whatever it may be, relationships with your kids, you're going to have ups and downs, but you got to stick it out and you got to look at the bigger picture of what you're doing for yourself and for other people. And it's hard to paint that for other people until they've gotten a taste of it. But I will tell you, there's no looking back. There's, there is no looking back. I can always fall back and do hair if I want to, if I want to, I mean, if I had to, but I can touch so many more lives this way and I can help people create that time or whatever it is that they're looking for that they need. So I, I will tell you money really has changed my life and I'm thankful to this day with the uncertainty of the world that I'm able to be home with my daughter. I'm able to be there with my family. I'm able to not feel so stressed out with the way of the world. Um, and I'm not saying everybody should homeschool because I still to this day don't know what the heck I'm doing, but I, sure, I, get, I get an A for trying. <laughs> but I will tell you, um, I haven't looked back. And I'm thankful and opportunities like this, like some of you people I know from an, another accountability group, but I've never gotten to see your face. Your names look familiar. You guys know me. I don't know you and I'm sorry, but now I do. And I'm very excited. And, and, and I get opportunities like this to speak in front of really awesome people and awesome leaders. And that fills me, you know, that fuels me. I can stand behind the chair all day long and mentor and love on my clients, but sometimes I need something to feed my soul to and to fire me up. And being here is such an honor. So I hope that's what you're looking for. I always feel like I give a different rendition of this story, um, of my story. And then I'll be like, oh crap, I forgot this and I forgot that. But um that's basically my life with Monate. And um yeah, that's it. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. That was so amazing, inspiring. I absolutely love 
the time freedom. I mean, it is the reason why I'm doing this and um, it's just such a blessing. I am going to throw this over to Aaron. Aaron Henley, I think he's still on. Yes, he is. And he's going to speak for a bit, but before, oh, hold on one second. Before I do, um, can I just remind you, if you guys popped in late and you're a guest, can you please put your first and last name in the comments and the person who invited you? If you're my guest, I already covered it for you. So you don't have to. Okay, take it away, Aaron. Okay, hey, thanks. Thanks, Patty, and thanks, Jen. Jen, you know, you're, I, I think I've heard your story before, but I don't know, that version and everything you talked about meant so much to me. Um, and really, I, I didn't hear about how your business did during COVID. And I will tell you, you guys, you have, you have no idea what, what can happen when you can help people find a path when they didn't know what they were going to do. We, none of us knew what the world was going to be like when COVID struck. And this was just an option. And thank goodness uh, for some of us who already had it. And then some of us, uh, some people were, were able to join in take advantage and help their families in whatever way they can. But really the, the thing that I like to, to close with um, is I, I like people to think about, uh, uh, Jen, you kind of mentioned this with the, the time that you never get back and things like that. But it's, for me, the, the number one thing that I, I did in life, you know, me and Roxy were both uh, I, she was stay at home mom. I was working crazy hours. I was doing, I didn't even know that I, I had a minimum did 70 hours a week. Just that's what I did. I loved my job. I showed up to work and I worked 70 hours a week. And, and then when I was, you know, when I was at home, I was always on the phone, making sure everything's still okay. And I just work, 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 work. And it was kind of a thankless job. And at the end of the day, you, you know, you, you start to get yourself into these life situations where you, you take a step back and say, is that the version of my life that I envisioned? Is that what I expected to live the way my life would end up? Or, you know, do I want to live this way for the next 10 years? And, um, you know, for me and Roxy, we did, we, our answer was easily uh, no at some point. We had a super complicated life. You know, she had started Monate. Um, and I was, we, I had gotten a job in Canada, our family's in Chicago. We now have built our dream home in Canada, driving back and forth. Sometimes she lived in the apartment we rented nearby our kids in Chicago. Sometimes she lived with me in, in uh, Illinois. I, I would drive back and forth to 2000 miles a month. You know, it was crazy. And we, one day we're just like, why are, why are we living this crazy life when we don't really need to? And we stopped and evaluated it. And I quit my high paying job and stayed at home with her as my full-time job. And it was loving on my wife, loving on my, on my grandkids and helping her run the business. And that really was the best version of our life together. We were spending the time we wanted to spend. We still wanted to spend time together, okay? If you have a husband you don't wanna spend time with, can't fix you there maybe you're living a perfect life, okay? <laughs> but if you want to spend time with your fa family and you still love your kids, uh, you know, um, you, you, all, I, all I'm really saying is at the end of the day, everybody on this call, regardless of what you do, what, regardless of any decision you might make for Monet or anything is really evaluate, how do I want to spend the rest of my life? How do I want to spend, what is the best version of my life? Am I living it? Is me is are me and my family living it, or is do I want to take a step towards it? And I'm going to tell you, time is not your friend. Uh, you do want to make your decisions. You want to get those steps forward. Try if you know what your best version of your life is, go try to make it happen. And I, I'm going to tell you, there's a reason why a lot of people talk about this company that is not about uh, just making great hair products and having the best hair of your life or the best skin of your life or the best wellness of your life. Um, it's really about the best version of your life. And we, we are in the line, the changing lives business. And that's what I like to see. I like to see everybody on this call, um, all the market partners, all the prospects, whatever version of life you want, I want that for you. 
and I want you to go get it and make it happen. And that's, that's why I wake up in the morning to try to make sure that you think about it. And if you need some help, I can help you with Monate or the market partner that invited you because we're all one team and we all support each other. And that's another great part about Monet. Anyways, that's where I'm at. I'm going on 28 hours uh, since I traveled. <laughs> so I just got home. This is like my first moment home. And um, I love being here with you guys for it. Um, but that's what I had. So I'll hand it back to Patty. Uh, thank you so much. We always appreciate all of your inspiring words. And if I she's cannot... ready. <laughs> I'm here. Can you not hear me? So any last minuteers, if you want to. Okay. Can you guys not hear me? I could hear you. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so I'm going to hand this over to Jess because she's going to be doing the draw for us. So if there's anybody who has not put their name in really quick, let us know. I think we got everybody. I'm so grateful that you could do this tonight. It's just is such a big help. Really, really. I think we're good. You want to go ahead and say, okay. here we go. And there's 12 people. Tammy Fulton. All right, Tammy Fulton. So she was invited by Becky. Congratulations, Tammy, that's awesome. So Tammy, you won a box of energy. Um, Becky, make sure that you get um, Tammy's information and give it to Aaron or to me. And um, I am just gonna wrap this up right now. So I wanna say thank you so much to Jen. We really, really appreciate you being here and sharing your, your story with us. And I'm so glad I got a chance to talk with you. Awesome. And thank you to Aaron for always inspiring us. And thank you to everybody who took time out tonight to be with us. We do this again every Tuesday night. Actually, next week is going to be a special night. So um, ask your market partner about that. And um, yeah, if you have questions, get back with the person who invited you and have a great night, you guys. Bye, everybody.